Hello and welcome to this, the Outside Xbox Quiz of the Year 2023. Thank you. That is the year. <laughs> Isn't it? What a year it's been for games. The best year in a long time. Maybe the best year ever? No. But also a year with immense challenges and hardships for developers there themselves. Is. A complicated year if you're a fan of gaming. Indeed. But a memorable one, I hope, for your sake. Because we're about to find out just how well you remember the year gone by, which was... 20... 23. Do there I get a point? No point. Oh, no point come on. That. Sorry. <laughs> that was just a warm-up question. Oh. We're going to start with okay. round one. So much video game news this year. So much that you may have missed some of it. Let's see if you are paying attention as I read you a series of headlines from Eurogamer.net and you attempt to fill in the blank to complete the headline. Headline one, Mike. 15% of Baldur's Gate 3 playtime is spent in blank. In bed. <laughs> With a starion. <laughs> I do mean sex, to be clear. Is that, is that your answer? <laughs> no. Do you want to lock it in? Is it, um, is it the camp? You know, the kind of like out of the camp world where you can chat to all your... You know, because that's... When I'm playing Mass Effect, like I spend most of my time in my Normandy, like checking out how my crew are doing. So I think in the camp is like a safe-ish bet. Okay. 15% of Baldur's Gate 3 playtime is spent in blank. Character creator. Not even hanging around, Jane says character creator. That is correct. Oh, come on. Yeah, it makes sense, I guess. How much time did you spend in the character creator, Jane? A lot. A lot and lot and lot of time. Got to make sure you got the right willy, haven't you? Super important. <laughs> There's only like four willies. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you know, that makes it even harder because you're like, which one really expresses what my character's going for? <laughs> you're saying it would be easier if you had like a... A billion willies. Like the menu at the Cheesecake Factory. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You just The stakes are lower, aren't they? When you finish creating your character, they're like, hey, now create this other character. And I was like, nah, because I wanted to start the game. Question number two. Here's your second headline. More people are playing blank on Steam than Starfield. Right. Now, would this be a game that came out at the same time as Starfield, so it's a kind of current releases comparison story, or is it like a game that it's embarrassing for Starfield? What would be an embarrassing comparison, like, do you think? Like Minesweeper. <laughs> I'm not sure if Minesweeper is on Steam. <laughs> what would be embarrassing? Like an older game. It's going to be something old, right? Like a game that's been out for a while. It could be something that's been around for a while. Not just something obvious like Baldur's Gate 3, because obviously. Uh, I don't know, Skyrim? I'm going to say Rust. Is it Rust? No, Mike, the answer is more people are playing Skyrim on Steam than Starfield. Dang. Well, a lot of people playing Skyrim. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense as a headline. And wow. Yeah, damning indictment. I mean, to be honest, there are so many copies of Skyrim. Skyrim's had a lot of time to accrue players. This story is from the 15th of November, and it says combined the 2011 Skyrim release, the 2016 edition. Special Edition and VR. Yeah. Um, puts them at a 24-hour player peak of 25,181, whereas Starfield's 24-hour peak on this date was 23,920. I'm sure VR didn't move the needle that much. You've got to put a stupid hat on and stuff to play VR. No one's doing that. Oh, actually, that doesn't include VR. They're just saying probably it's higher with VR. Yeah, right, okay, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. One or two higher, yeah. All right, headline number three, Jane. Universal Studios to host a blank Halloween Horror Nights attraction later this year. Last of Us. You uh, went to it. I should know. Of course it was Last of Us. Correct. Universal Studios to host a Last of Us Halloween Horror Nights attraction later this year. Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson reprised their roles as Joel and Ellie respectively for it. Can't um, believe they were at that theme park every night. Yeah, just working at the they concession were, stands. <laughs> there was also Last of Us themed food. Yeah, right? your mouth hosted a Cordyceps <laughs> <laughs> hot yeah. dog. My mouth hosted a walkthrough <laughs> horror attraction of, of its own for a Cordyceps corn dog. Sounds I showed disgusting. you a picture of it. You said yeah. it looked disgusting. Yeah, it looks and sounds disgusting. It was a good time. All right. Well done, James. That's another point for you. Yes. That's one point to you, Mike. Yes. Needed that. Am I like, I haven't dropped a point yet. Yeah. Three for three already. Let's keep it up. Okay. Question number four. Blank composer criticizes Mario movie for not crediting him. Okay. So this is a composer who worked on a Mario game. Uh, oh, or is it? It's not a, not a Mario thing. I don't think. Blank composer yeah. criticizes Mario movie for not crediting it. Pose. Well, I haven't seen the Mario movie, so if it drops some unexpected non-Mario music, this could be a trick question. Uh... Blank composer. Uh... Am I allowed to know how many words the blank is? Uh... Oh, is it the... Um... It's three words. Oh. Is it the composer of the Hooked on the Brothers like theme tune from the cartoon? Super Mario Bros composer? 
I don't know. Yeah, car the cartoon, you know, composer or the Hooked on the Brothers composer guy. Is it him? Mike, you're close. I can't give you the point though. It is the Donkey Kong rap composer. Oh, DK rap. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yep, that Grant was it. Kirk Hope. Um, oh, Grant. Oh, him. Uh, Favourite of the channel. Hey, Grant. Took to Twitter to express his disappointment in Super Mario Bros. movie for failing to credit him for the DK rap. For my great rap. Yeah, it is. I mean, it is fantastic. It let's is. have a let's have a clip. I mean, how can you not credit the man for this genius? I know, quite. Okay, final headline for mm. this round, Jane. Mm -hmm. Heinz launches blank awareness campaign in Fortnite. What's Heinz need to raise awareness of? Yeah, what is Ketchup Heinz? awareness. What is Heinz interested in? <laughs> beans awareness? <laughs> I mean, surely all their campaigns are beans awareness campaigns. Is this like a joke awareness campaign? Like we're raising awareness of dry french fries or something. Uh, let's go for like bullying or something like that. You know, something like progressive and meaningful, but also where they can hang a sponsorship around it. You think Heinz is into that? They're against it. That's the point. I'm not suggesting <laughs> they're for they're it. Not, yeah. they're, it's not a campaign to promote bullying. <laughs> Be more aware of bullying and do yeah. more of it. Yeah. Condiment awareness. It's close, but I can't give it to you, Jane. It is, in fact, tomato awareness. Ow! Ugh, fine. The map is designed to highlight a good cause, the falling levels of soil quality worldwide due to over-farming. Bloody hell. Well, that's not tomato awareness. That's <laughs> agricultural, you know, danger awareness. Uh, I wish I could give you the point, Jane, Ooh. but unfortunately... Okay, let me tot up uh, your <laughs> I score I could tot it here. up you two, right? Was it two? No, it was one. One. <laughs> You got three out of five for the headline round. Pretty good. It's not bad. Pretty good. I think you should be proud of yourself. Don't worry, Mike, there's plenty of time to make up the points as we move in to round two. Lots of games came out this year, and of course, here in Europe, they all need a PEGI or Pan European Game Information rating, which lets prospective buyers know exactly how many decapitations they're in for. A visit to the PEGI website is always a good time, as you can read extremely dry descriptions of in game content, but I want to know if you can identify which 2023 games they're talking about in the following PEGI ratings entries. Is PEGI displeased or is PEGI pleased? Mm, let's find She'll out. She'll never tell. No, wait, she does. She publishes it on her website. Okay, so game number one. Mm -hmm. What game is this describing? This game contains depictions of graphic violence towards human-like characters. For example, one scene shows a man's hands being cut off during a sword fight, causing blood to spurt out of the wounds as his hands fall to the floor. There are also scenes of violence towards defenseless human characters, notably when a sword is pushed into a bound woman and then twisted. Wow, this sounds horrible. <laughs> mm. That sounds violent. That sounds pretty traumatic. Mm. And were it not 2023, uh, the hands thing would have had me thinking of Resident Evil Village, where lots of hands came off. Well, I didn't play any games where someone put a sword in a bound woman and then they twisted. That's horrible. Um, it's pretty gritty. Pretty gritty. It's not like, is it Lords of the Fallen? Incorrect, I'm afraid that is Final Fantasy 16. Ha, huh, that makes sense. No, yeah. boy, I haven't played it yet. I heard they get dark in this one. It's going that... to that Game of Thrones kind of. Yikes. I was expecting more references to the sexy stuff. Yeah, know. I just thought it had like nudity. I didn't realize it. <laughs> I don't mean sex to be clear. Okay, number two. This game features very mild violence in a comical setting. Enemies are defeated by jumping on top of them or by using special powers such as fire balls. Enemies <laughs> flash when hit and fall off screen when defeated, as do the protagonists. Uh, it's Super Mario Wonder, presumably. Super Mario Wonder. Correct. That yes. is the description of Super Mario Wonder. No hands getting cut off in that one. <laughs> that we know well, I've not completed it. But we know of. Maybe Peggy so didn't complete it. Maybe <laughs> yeah. it okay, description number three. Gameplay contains strong graphic violence throughout, featuring decapitations, dismemberment, and mutilation. There are also scenes in which defenseless human characters are killed in gruesome ways, including being tied to a stake and immolated. I mean, that could be so many games. <laughs> tied to a stake and immolated. Mm. Came out this year. Mm -hmm. And it's not Final Fantasy again. <laughs> it's not, I mean, okay. it'd be quite funny if all of them were Final Fantasy. <laughs> Resident Evil 4, obviously. Obviously. A memorable immolation in that one is uh, probably the probably gaming's most memorable immolation, wouldn't you say? 
I would say so. That's least, not a list we will be doing on our Sunday's <laughs> <laughs> Seven most <laughs> memorable in relations <laughs> in video games. Oh, sh it's Resident Evil. Yes. It's Resident Evil. Resident Evil 4, four correct. Nice. Number four, the game also features some scary scenes and situations, including red eyes appearing in fog at night. Scary sea creatures may also attack the player's boat. When the boat is hit, cargo is lost. If the boat is hit too many times, it sinks and the game ends. Is it Sea of Thieves? Did they re-rate Sea of Thieves? It's not Sea of Thieves, but it's boaty. That does sound a lot like Sea of Thieves. Uh, that is incorrect, Mike. That is Dredge, the uh, Lovecraftian ah, yes. fishing game released by Black Salt Games and Team 17 this year. Allegedly very good, but yep. I haven't played it. I think you get a Put kick it on out my of list. It. That sounds really good. Okay, and final one. Yes. Dead bodies are frequently seen on the ground. Some have been cut in half or wow. missing limbs, and there is often sight of internal organs. One scene shows a character removing a metal shard from their stomach, causing profuse bleeding. There are references to marijuana use and sight of marijuana use, although the player's character is not able to use the drug. <laughs> <laughs> not trying hard enough. All right, that sounds memorable. If I'd played a game where someone took a shard of metal out of their gut and then smoked a joint, <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would remember that. I'm now just trying to think of any games that came out this year <laughs> and like whether anyone smoked a fat blunt in any of them. It was a great year for games. Loads of stuff came out. I know, I know. I just have a terrible memory. You've definitely played this one. Have I? Oh, what? We, <laughs> oh, uh, no. Yeah, we streamed it. Oh, no. We streamed it. The clue was in the dead bit. Surely it's Dead Island 2? Correct. That is a description of Dead Island 2. Of course it's bloody Dead Island 2, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, of course it is. The Love Shack is what I call my bedroom because I like tennis and never score. It's been a long year, folks. It came out in, I want to say, probably January. April. Let me total up your scores that was here. That a fun game. That was a fun game. That was a fun game. Uh, you got two, two out of five. Two. For the Peggy mm. ratings. Okay. Um, that's, you know, still good. Still a commanding position. Give yourself a celebratory marijuana cigarette. Oh, uh, no, I won't be doing that. Round number three, Jane, is character names. Every good video game character needs a name, otherwise your character would be calling everyone Thingy and that guy. <laughs> Excuse me. Which would detract from the story. But what how about well... the man who erased his name? He's still got a name. But how well do you think you can identify these games from the names of their NPCs? Let's find out. Okay, NPC names. Let's do it. NPC number one, Dribbles the Clown. <laughs> Dribbling from where? I know there's a circus in Baldur's Gate 3. I don't, haven't been there yet, but it could have a clown called Dribbles. Is it something weird like Starfield or something like that? Is there a clown in Starfield? I don't know, Mike. Is that your guess? Yeah, why not? Incorrect, Mike, I'm afraid. Dribbles the Clown is a character from Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah! He is to be found uh, in the Circus of the Last Days in Rivington. Right. I say he's to be found there. He has been murdered and chopped into a bunch of different pieces, and you have to find all Ew. of his pieces as part of a side quest. But Ew. you are correct. All right. Dribbles is from yes. Baldur's Gate 3. Way! That's hard because there are so many characters in Baldur's Gate 3, and all That's of them true. are richly fleshed out and um, and and have about 8,000 lines each. Yeah, that's a fair point. But you still don't get a point. So no, that's true. All right, NPC number two. Yes. Grease Dritus. Oh. That does have a sort of sci-fi vibe. To, well, it's either... Uh, I think that sounds like a Starfield name. I'm going to go Starfield again. Oh, he's from Jedi Jedi Survivor. Yes. yes. Can you describe Grease Dritus? He's a little dude. Yeah, he's a little he's like, a cat little, guy. A little cat guy that cooks. Face like a butt. Yep. I yeah. feel like he was wearing a sporty tracksuit. Yeah, he had a... Yeah. I'll tell you, Monk. The Bedlam Raiders are going to be the end of this town. We got no hope, zero, zilt, nothing. How you doing, BD? He cute. looked like he was in The Sopranos. Yeah, yeah, I like him. Not that much like a butt. There are definitely characters in Star Wars that have more butt-like faces. <laughs> Face like Mike's butt. <laughs> yeah, Mike, it's, it's entirely horizontal, yeah. Okay, NPC number three, King Dorafan. That's D-O-R-E-P-H-A-N. What other games had kings in them? Really struggling this year. It's been a real year. Uh, Final Fantasy? It's a good guess. Tears of the Kingdom, maybe? Correct. Yes. King Dorafan. He is the king of the Zora's domain. He's the father of Prince Sidon. Of course. Okay, next NPC, Mr. Wallin Dor. Wallin Dor? Yep. Sounds like a pun, doesn't it? It Wall does, doesn't it? Indoor. Sounds like a significant name. Wallin Dor. Wallin Dor. Door in wall, surely. That's how it was supposed to work. Uh, yeah, okay. What door games have there been this year? What's, what door games? 
We've not had a Starfield one yet, have we? Come on, it's got to be Starfield. I'm going to keep guessing Starfield until it comes up. You're going to keep guessing Starfield. Yeah. Uh, incorrect. Damn it. That is from Alan Wake 2. He is the talk show host played by actor David Harewood, who mm. you will remember from his many fine performances. Fine yeah. Shakespeare and actor. All right, next character. Yes. Sandrak, Grand Magus of the Order of Masks. Mm. That's Sandrak with two Ks, if you're wondering. S-A-N-D-R-A-K-K. Sandrak, Sandrak, Grand Magus. Grand Magus of the... Order of Masks. Order of Masks. Well, you know, it sounds all an awful lot like a Starfield name, Andy. <laughs> Grand Magus of the Order of Masks. <laughs> all right, fine. Can you think of any games that prominently featured magic this year? I mean, lots of them. How about that EA one? The one that, uh, oh. Now, the chances of me remembering the name <laughs> of this EA game. Okay, well, what does Grand Magus say to you? It's like wizardy, you know, fantasy nonsense, isn't it, basically? Well, well, we've already had Baldur's Gate. <laughs> More than one. We've already wizardy, had Tears of the Kingdom. Wizardy fantasy They're nonsense. They're the wizardy fantasy nonsense games. Let me go into my mind palace, because you know I know the game. I know you know the you game. You know I know the game. You can tell I know the I game. I can tell you know the game. I just... Okay. Uh, well, Sandrak, the Grand Magus of the Order of Masks, is in fact from Immortals of Avium. The... Uh, oh, yeah, the first battle, person the battle, battle mage thing. Battle mage game. Yeah, you remember? Yeah, we played it. Yeah, we did. No, nope, it is literally the most forgettable game name <laughs> that has ever been... Written. Immortals of Avium. Sure. Sure, why not? <laughs> sure, okay, fine. All right, next character, Solomon Reed. Solomon Reed is from... is from Starfield. <laughs> right? No? <laughs> it's, um, oh again, one that you've, you've played. Uh, you've interacted. Andy, that doesn't mean anything. You've interacted with this character. Have I? On the live stream. Solomon Reed. Solomon Reed <laughs> is from Cyberpunk 2077, Phantom Liberty. Oh, it's yeah, the it's just Elmer's guy, Elgin. yeah. Correct. Well, yeah. sci-fi. All the sci-fi games. Again, a game I have actually played. I just yeah. can't remember anyone. You spent the entire live stream trying to find him. Yes, but I referred to him by his real name, <laughs> Idris Elba. <laughs> How am I supposed to remember his name when it's so, he is so clearly Idris Elba? Well, because I only ever called that character Idris, so <laughs> that was there's no way well. I could remember he was called Solomon Reed. He was Idris to me. If he looked a bit less like Idris Elba, I'd have, I'd have called him his name. Okay, fine. Uh, next one, Sidolphus Telamon. Okay, fantasy. You know, it's really given me real Starfield vibes. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Tears of the Kingdom? No, you wouldn't do two Tears of the Kingdoms. Sidolphus. Uh, is that Final Fantasy 16? Correct. Final yep. Fantasy 16. Curses! Curse you, Final Fantasy 16. I could have just... his friends as Sid. That is uh, the character voiced by Ralph Innocent. Oh, I should have just guessed that one. Should have just thrown Final Fantasy at it. Okay, and finally, Romeo, King of Puppets. Go on, James. I need all the help I can get. Uh, my guess would be uh, the Lies of P. Lies of P, yes. Yes, I, it's just something's coming to me. <laughs> just a real brain, uh, like, just something, there's a word materializing. It's Starfield. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's got to be from Tales of P. Uh, Lies of P. Lies of P. Lies of P. Lies of P. Lies of P, correct. Well done. Okay. You get a point for that. <laughs> no, I'm going to I'm gonna take uh, James's counsel because I need it. And I, um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Lies of P. I don't know. Okay, well, I mean... <laughs> Okay, I feel like I owe you, Mike, this year. <laughs> okay, right. Thanks to that Baldur's Gate <laughs> Christmas challenge, so I'll allow you the point there. All right, thanks. Well, right. Yeah, yeah, it's nice to see. All right, you got three curses in the character names round, but it's time for the music round. Okay, so good. get ready to make All up right. some points. Okay, good. Well, we all knew it was coming, so to be honest, you really should be well prepared. That's right, it's the music round. How good are you at recognising music from some of this year's biggest and best games? Let's find out in the music round. Andy, I like to go into this quiz having not prepared at all. You know, I just think it's a more honest way to play. All right, piece of music number one. Hit me. Uh, survival is heroic as a tiger is. Earn my stripes because you know I'm do or die with this. Journey started young, super hard headed. Call me crazy, but you is not my psychiatrist. Been through a lifetime of strife and struggling. Ah, uh, Street Fighter. I'm listening to the lyrics. And I'm gonna live forever. That's my legacy. It's so good. It's so good. He said he's a survivalist. Sure. So I'm thinking of like you know a, a deep survival <laughs> game. Sure. 
It's all about sucking really hard. I do mean sex, to be clear. But eventually getting better, which I just think is such a powerful, positive message. It's cool, it's modern, you know? It's obviously, uh, if not a licensed track, then, then a, a track you know, made for a game with a modern setting, I would, I would assume. Uh, is it Dead Island again? Okay, so your answer is Street Fighter 6. Yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy 16. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, that is, in fact, from Street Fighter Six. Oh! Oh, I bet Mike bloody got that one, didn't he? Instantly, yeah. Instantly Mike got that one. Yeah. That was good. Can I just listen to this for the rest of the... You may, yes. Rats. Curses. All right, piece of music number two. Weird, almost chiptune-like club music. Sounds like my phone's ringing. But kind of magical as well. Okay, um, like a puzzle game maybe or a sci-fi game. This is really tricky. This is a game you've played quite a lot of this year. Burr, 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 burr. Is it like space club music from Starfield? Is it the club music from Starfield? It is. It's from <gasps> the Astral Lounge on Nova in Starfield. Yes, finally, I can well stop done. saying it. <laughs> okay, next bit of music. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. You grew up nice and sheltered with mama's pretty stories and your own made up fury. And mama gave me a magic clicker. Well, yes, I think it's true and fair to say. Absolutely shredding. Wailing. What's that saying to you? Mm. Kind of a rock forward, waily guitar piece. Mm hmm. No, I don't know. No? No idea? Mm -mm. Nothing springing to mind mm -mm. famously this year? It's not the band from um, Alan Wake 2, is it? Is it the, the old gods of Asgard or whatever they're called? That is correct, Mike. Yes. That is the song Herald of Darkness from Alan Wake 2, the memorable musical sequence. Oh, is that the one they do the dance number to? It is the one they do the oh, dance number Andy. to. Uh, it's got a Latin flavour. It's totally tropical. Kind of Latin vibes. Super catchy. Um, I try to think about games that had a Latin flavour is the issue. Did they do a Forza, a Forza Horizon this year? Was it set in South or Central America? No, that wasn't this year. It's a little misleading, this one. Any guesses? Mm. Is it Super Mario Wonder again? Like, maybe it's like a sort of Latin vibey bonus mode. It's a good guess, but it is not correct. Oh. The only game I can think of that has a sort of, um, I guess, Latin uh, feel to it is, is weirdly, is Resident Evil 4. But like, I wonder whether this is like playing on the radio somewhere in there or something like that. It's like, it doesn't sound horror at all, but yeah, I wonder whether it's Resident Evil 4. It is Resident Evil 4. Uh, what? That's the music from the shooting gallery. What? Yeah, oh, no. You can find in the merchants. Oh, well, that is oh, misleading. Yeah. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, OK. All right. All right. Smooth. This has got to be a Final Fantasy game. Or an RPG. It's got to be a JRPG of some sort. I mean, this feels like Final Fantasy-ish. It's like sweeping orchestral. Oh, okay. Oh, no, that does sound familiar. Yeah, like Final Fantasy. Let's say Final Fantasy. Let's say Final Fantasy? Yeah. Big game this year. Is it Tears of the Kingdom? Correct. Yay! That is the Tears of the Kingdom suite from uh, the new Zelda game. That's a so that was an you. easy one. <laughs> I was, that was the other game I was going to say. It was yeah. like either Final Fantasy or, um, or Tears of the Kingdom. This was Luke's pick to include because he loves the introduction of the saxophone into the... Yeah, well, it does give it a smooth jazz feel. <laughs> Now this sounds like a Final Fantasy battle tune, if ever I heard one. It's very Final Fantasy battle sort of stuff. Oh, they really juiced it up this year. <laughs> I'm imagining two probably mostly nude um, mm -hmm. icons fighting each other. Yep, correct. That is the battle theme from Final Fantasy yeah. 16. I can imagine all the decapitations and relations yeah. or whatever's imagine going the on. the hands getting all cut the off nudity. and falling to yeah. the ground. Nice. And your final bit of music. Can you tell me what game this music is from? It's 
spooky, but it's got a kind of like urgent bass line to it. This is a loading screen or like a transitional kind of piece of music. Something in like modern spooky. Maybe like a zombie game, maybe Dead Island, but... Could be Dead Island 2. Yeah, I'll say that. You say Dead Island 2? Yeah, why not? Oh, um, it's Redfall, isn't it? It is, yes. correct, well done. I would um, recommend people check out Redfall soundtrack. It's really good. Is it? Yeah. I was in the right ballpark. Yeah. Modern day scary game. Yes, Redfall. Wow. Yeah, oh, there you go. Well done. You remembered Redfall. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, oh, Redfall. OK, now we're moving into the final round, Mike. Uh -oh. Last chance to, a quick fire to make up some points. Well, let's find out with the title screen for it. Here it is now. I don't get to see the title screen. It could be anything. Andy could have written, it's the Mike Smells round, and I don't, I wouldn't know. Quick questions, looking for quick answers provided by you quickly. Here Hi, all we right, go. All right, all right, I'll try. I want you to identify these smells that Mike <laughs> often makes. <laughs> As revealed at the recent Game Awards, game director Hideo Kojima and filmmaker Jordan Peele are collaborating on an immersive gaming experience. Yes. What's it called? OD. 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 Correct. Yay. OD. Are you looking forward to it? It's for gamers and screamers. Of course I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Do you think it will ever come out? No, no not a chance. Not a chance in hell. Still, it's fun to think about, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, just imagine. What a treat. That's what they're there for. <laughs> Question two. One of the biggest games of this year was Baldur's Gate 3, a sprawling RPG that allowed you to assemble a party from 10 potential companion characters. Okay. I want to know how many you can name for half a point each. 10? I've mm -hmm. met about three. Oh, OK. All right, great. Uh, Will, Karlak, Gale, Asterian. Lizelle. Uh, is that how you pronounce the name? Lazel. Lazel, yeah. yeah, yeah. Minthara? Minthara, correct. Who no one got? What's the lady you meet really early on? What's her name? Shadowheart. Three so far. Mm -hmm. Great. Halsin can be in your party, can't he? Correct. Um, I've forgotten her name. Okay, the only two you didn't get were Jahira. Jahira! And Minsk. <gasps> Minsk, of course. Okay, I but that forgot. was still a very impressive showing. That's four, four points there for eight correct Hooray. companion characters. That's probably it. That's probably all I can name. That's all you can name? Yeah. Okay, uh, you could have also had Shadowheart, Will, Karlak, Halsin, Minthara, Minsk, and Jahera. Wow. So you got one and a half points. I've heard about of about two more of those. But yeah, Shadowheart was the one I was looking for. You've not heard of Minsk? No. And his space hamster Boo? No. I think I've read a I've read a D and D comic though with him in. Oh yeah, he's OG Minsk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about the hamster. Yeah. I don't mean sex, to be clear. Okay, next question. Mm -hmm. Lovers of giant robots delighted this year with the release of a new Armored Core game from Dark Souls developer from Software, mm -hmm. Armored Core Six. But what was its subtitle? Uh... Oh, I remember this because there was a a, a a live action ad with Carl Urban in it. And he says the name, I think mm -hmm. he says the name of the subtitle, something of something, like Immortals of Avium. <laughs> it's not Immortals of Avium. It's not Avium. Immortals of Avium. Something of the Rubicon. Immortals of Avium. <laughs> Immortals of Avium. <laughs> okay, uh, it is Flames, Burnings, the Fires. Fires? Oh, can I have a point for fires of? You can have a whole point if you get the whole thing. Um, I feel fires like you're nearly of... there. We streamed this one as well. Yeah. Carl Urban, there he is. Right, and he turns to camera and he says, James, <laughs> <laughs> don't forget, it's the fires of... <laughs> uh. Fires of the Rubicon or something like that. Yeah, I'll let you have that. It's fires of Rubicon. Yeah, there you go. Rubicon. I'll give you half a point for fires of. Question number four. We also got a new Mortal Kombat game this year, Mortal Kombat 1, complete with a whole new suite of horrifying fatalities with inappropriately cheery names. <laughs> but can you tell me which Mortal Kombat character the following fatalities belong to? Okay. Hollywood Walk of Pain. Oh, that's uh, Johnny. Correct. Yeah. Talk about talent. Fatality 2, Royal Blender. Ooh, um... Katana? That sounds like a Sindel sort of vibe, like she's a queen, uh, she's got the kind of like whippy hair thing, so I'm going to say Sindel. Good guess, but it's actually Katana. Oh yeah, makes sense. As she's the princess of Adenia well. yeah. or whatever. Fine. Hair comes trouble. What's the hair lady's name? Oh, this one I knew because she was like, she was the lead in the trailer. Mm -hmm. And the, the hair stuff was like, this front and centre. And her name is... 
Oh, I give up, I give up. What is it? No, well, that's Sindal, isn't it? Yeah. Correct. That's a great title for a fatality. Uh, question five. Among its many dark, dreamlike levels, Alan Wake 2 features Coffee World, a confusing coffee-themed amusement park in some woods. Okay. Which of these is not a ride that can be found in the park? Okay. The Espresso Express, the Slow Roaster Ferris Wheel, the Percolator, Ristretto Races, or Latte Lagoon? I feel like Latte Lagoon. I'm just going to go for Latte Lagoon. You think Latte Lagoon yeah. is the one? The odd one out. The odd one out. No, wait, you wouldn't have put it last. You wouldn't put it last in the list. <laughs> hey, this is metagaming. You would have you put it somewhere in the middle. Ristretto Races. Correct. Yes! <laughs> metagaming! Latte Lagoon is a real ride. It is a lake filled with pedal boats that you can paddle around. Sounds and the, delightful. The fake one was Ristretto Races, which I made. I should have, yeah, I should have guessed that one because I've never heard the word ristretto before. It's a kind of coffee. Right. It's like a more concentrated, it doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> okay, question number six. This year also gave like... us our first official look at Grand Theft Auto 6 in a spectacular trailer that instantly became the most viewed video in yeah. a 24-hour period yeah, in YouTube right. history. How many views did it get in 24 hours? I will give you five million either way. What's a good number of views? <laughs> More, is, worked on YouTube, more is good, right? Yeah, more is good. More is good. Generally. I'm gonna say 94. 68. Yep, I'm gonna give you that, Mike. It was 90,421,491 views. You were uh, yes. just <laughs> just within the 5 million mm. range, so well what's, done. What's 5 million between friends? Exactly. Um, yeah, in 24 hours. Good That's job. Wild. Grand Theft Auto 6. Why don't we just make a video that does that? Why don't we just make a Grand Theft Auto 6? Yeah, why don't we just make a Grand Theft Auto? But then we'd have to make a Grand Theft Auto as why well. Why didn't you make it? I was... I was, I was busy. I was busy too. <laughs> and finally, Diablo 4 released this year and was a big success, but what significant amount of money did the game make within just five days of its release? And um, do I get a margin of error? Nope. What? <laughs> What's the significant amount of money for a, for a game to make? Is it none? Is it a trick question? Nope. Okay. So there's no... A regular question. But the, what, I have, to na I have to name the exact amount? Yeah, but I said it was a significant amount, so... Significant as in, not large, as in it had significance. One dollar. He made a single perfect dollar. Uh, <laughs> a single perfect dollar. I don't know. What's significant? <laughs> it just really tickled me. I guess a hundred million dollars? No, the answer is in fact six hundred and sixty-six million dollars. Six six six. That's not true. So <laughs> That's not true. I mean, that can't be true. Okay, fine. It's not true. The number of a million beasts. How do you feel about your score this year? I feel like I've performed extremely badly. <laughs> All I can hope is that Jane has performed even more extremely badlier. Jane, I can tell you yes. that this year yes. you scored yes. 20 and a half points. And? And Mike scored 18 and a half yes. points. You are this yes. year's... Yes. Yes. Quiz of the Year champion yes, 2023. Yes, yes. What is there anything you would like to say to your crushed opponent? Uh, sorry, Mike, you lose, big loser. <laughs> yeah, you can I get him. left home? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, what a what an honour and a pleasure. And well done to Andy for composing this very fine quiz. I hope you played along at home, and I hope you did better than either me or Mike. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. In the words of Jeff Keighley, please wrap it up. All right, yeah, I'm wrapping it up. Wrapping it up. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time.